Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here on Bully Whispers, and we are here today to evaluate the answer to the question, how Machiavellian was Walter White? For viewers new to this series, Machiavellianism is much more specific than just being a good schemer or some general notion that the ends justify the means. The Prince is essentially a how-to-rule manual for current or aspiring leaders, detailing the most effective ways to deal with specific circumstances and different types of people based on Machiavelli's historical observations. So, how Machiavellian was Heisenberg? Well, answering that question for him will be a bit different than it would be for someone like Gus Fring or Lalo Salamanca, who are bad from the start, because Walter is a very different person in the beginning than he is at the end. So in answering that question, we'll be following Walt along his journey into the underworld through five stages. His personal disposition and initial attempt to enter the drug business, where we get a good base point from which to evaluate him through his short time with Tuco, his second attempt at running the show on his own, his time with Gus Fering, and his third attempt to be the top guy, all the while evaluating his actions against those that Machiavelli recommended. Quick side note, although we will be following his progression chronologically, we will not be going into when he truly transitions from Walter White into Heisenberg, because that would be an episode in and of itself, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. From the start, Walt has one thing going for him, and to no one's surprise, it's his intelligence. Machiavelli describes three levels of intellect, with the third, or lowest, being incapable of understanding, the second, which is capable of understanding what they are taught, and the first, which is capable of innovation, which we see from Walt throughout the show. This intelligence will come in quite handy, since, according to Machiavelli, nothing is more perilous or uncertain of success than trying to install a new order, and the worst thing you can do is have to learn it on the fly, which he has to. Right, I will admit to a bit of a learning curve. You see, unfortunately for Walt, a leader must act according to the spirit of the time and place, and initially, other than some stories from Hank and the Ride Along, most of his knowledge of the drug trade probably came from the movies or television. Listen, you've been watching way too much Miami Vice. Yeah, maybe he did. But all that time he spent watching MacGyver clearly paid dividends throughout the series. Anyways, according to Machiavelli, the basis for all states lie in good laws and good arms, and to start with, Walt kind of has one of them if you consider the laws of science. But as for the arms... Look at this. Look, them wrinkles like an old lady's cunt. Not so much, either in terms of muscle or infrastructure. So he joins up with Jesse Pinkman and they begin their operation. However, due to their lack of infrastructure, they weren't making nearly as much as he expected. In an effort to start making stacks of Benjamins instead of George's, Walt has Jesse meet with a mid-level dealer named Crazy Eight, and the resulting chaos led to Walt killing his first two people. Now to be fair, given the circumstances around those deaths, it's somewhat understandable that Walt still didn't truly grasp the reality of the world he was entering, but for whatever reason moving forward, he remained fairly delusional regarding the drug trade. No matter what happens, no more bloodshed. Although he does understand the need to deal in bulk, which brings us to his relationship with Tuco, where we can really begin to evaluate him. According to the prince, a wise man will imitate great men so that at least if they don't have the same ability, they will resemble it, and it's here that I must point out two things. First, due to the nature of how they attain their power and wealth, Machiavelli expressed that they could never be considered great men. However, second, assuming we take that aspect out of the picture, Tuco still wouldn't be considered a great man even in that world. In fact, Tuco wouldn't even be considered a good man in that world. He would be an example of someone that Machiavelli would have said had success due more to their family name than to their ability, yet Walt still learned from him even if he wouldn't acknowledge it right away. It's during his short time with Tuco that we can begin to evaluate Walt in the Machiavellian sense through the lion and the fox analogy, with the lion being able to scare away the wolves and the fox being able to avoid snares. Right off the bat, Walt established himself as a lion, but he was not yet a fox as he was captured by Tuco shortly after the second buy, so he wasn't good at avoiding traps, nor was he good at setting them yet, as shown through his failed attempt at poisoning Tuco. However, Machiavelli states that good luck is the reason for half, maybe more of our success, and after a bit of extremely good luck, he and Jesse make it back and continue their journey into the meth trade. Now, as previously mentioned, a leader must act in according with the spirit of their time and place. However, at this point, Walt remains almost completely ignorant of his. He still plans on selling larger quantities moving forward, but without working with any other mid- or higher-level guys, which of course would put him in competition with those guys, but he will find that out later. Things were going well until Spooge robbed Skinny Pete, at which point Walter begins to understand that violence will be necessary. You think Tuco had breakage? 
I guess it's true, he did. He broke bones. And this is especially true to start. According to Machiavelli, nothing wastes like liberality, for the more you use it, the more you lose the ability to use it, and you will eventually end up broke, disrespected, or hated. Now, I've got another technical term for you. Non-sustainable business model. Yeah. I mean, seriously. What the hell do you want me to do? You ask me what I want you to do. I want you to handle it. I want you to shoot him with this gun that has my fingerprints all over it. Clearly, Walt still isn't much of a fox yet. Now, to be fair, for a brief moment between when he knew Spooge had been killed, but before he knew Jesse didn't do it, he did try to say he meant just to threaten him, but personally, I think he was just backpedaling after the fact because he still hadn't fully accepted what he was a part of. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Either way, Walt learns the value of being feared after word spreads that it was Jesse who killed Spooge. It keeps people in line. Which brings us to possibly the most famous Machiavellian question of them all, is it better to be loved or feared? Now, assuming you have to choose one or the other, Machiavelli asserts that it's better to be feared because while you can't make people love you, which Walt finds out with his family, you can make them fear you. He's the devil. Although it's important to note that this comes along with the caveat, as long as you're not hated, which will come back to bite Walter later. He also warns that overconfidence can lead to someone becoming incautious, and unfortunately for Walt, that's exactly what happens. Emboldened by their fearsome new reputation, an aggressive expansion begins, but after a combo is shot, Walter realizes they need help. We need a proper infrastructure. We need foot soldiers and we need dealers on a street level that are rock solid. We need muscle. According to Machiavelli, if you are incapable of self-support and must bring in outside assistance, it becomes increasingly important that you take care of your friends, which we see Walt do, or at least try and appear like he is doing with Jesse throughout most of the series. This becomes especially important under Gus Fring, and it's under Gus Fring that Walt really starts becoming Machiavellian. Now, one of the main reasons for taking care of your friends in this situation is to prevent outsiders from gaining a foothold with them, but we will get back to that in a bit. It's during his time with Gus Fring that Walter really turns over the Machiavellian leaf in terms of both understanding the spirit of his time and place and learning to be a fox, both of which can be seen when he confronts Gus about Hank's assassination attempt. And more than that, I respect the strategy. In your position, I would have done the same. And when given the opportunity, he did do the same thing. He used the poisoning of Brock to turn Jesse against Gus, but in his case, it was especially Machiavellian since he was the one who actually poisoned Brock. Had Walt not been able to pull that off, he would have become a prime example of why you should prevent outsiders from gaining a foothold with your allies. Because if they are strong, people will naturally flock to them, which he saw Jesse doing with Mike and Gus. Gus had begun successfully separating Walt from Jesse while bringing Jesse closer to him, and after Jesse had proven he could run his own lab in Mexico, Walt truly was expendable to Gus. Walt almost becomes a prime example of the problem the prince warns could befall those who bring in a stronger force for assistance. However, thanks to his trickery, he was able to use information gained from Jesse to take Gus out. At this point, Walt makes his third attempt at being the top guy, though he tries to frame it as a partnership. He makes the majority of his fortune and was about to walk away free and clear, but Machiavelli warns of overconfidence and... This genius of yours... Maybe he's still out there. Was just enough to keep Hank active on it, where a Miss Poorly Placed book connected the dots. From here, he is mostly trying to avoid capture and then seek revenge, so he's not trying to gain or maintain power, which leaves very little to evaluate from a Machiavellian standpoint. However, he does find out why Machiavelli warns against using mercenaries in a situation like this. Todd, I think I might have another job for your uncle. Given the opportunity, they will take what you have taken for themselves, which ends up costing Walt six barrels full of cash. Could have been all seven, but they decided to give him one back. At the end of the day, while Walt wasn't the most Machiavellian character in the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul world, he did progress remarkably far down that path, considering he was trying to do the hardest thing imaginable, establishing a new order, in the most difficult way possible, by learning on the fly. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Well, thanks for watching this episode here on Bully Whispers. 
as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.